we are here in the Still Life Academy website and the Cinema 4D CGI Whiskey course and the group chat. And I've been asked if I can see to explain how to unwrap bottle UVs in R21. Because in the course we use S22 and some people don't want to carry on using R21. So the essence of it is they are quite intrinsically different in the way that they handle the UV unwrappings. So let's try and jump in and answer the question. So here we are in Cinema 4D release 21. And we're at the stage of the course where we have our outer and inner walls of the bottle glass modelled, normal moved and stitched and sewed together. And we have this lovely edge selection for the panels. Now R21 is going to completely disregard those lovely edge loops, which is a real shame because they did create a wonderful flat 2D pattern that we talked about with like a pair of jeans, they all sort of work very well together. But no, R21 is going to completely ignore those, so we can basically turn them off. Now before we go and unwrap the UVs, let's just check at the neck area. Doing NG to see the wireframe. Are there any extraneous polygons between the outer and inner walls where the normal move and the stitch and so happened? No, all looking good. So back to clay for the object. Next thing to do is to delete the UV tag. Why? Because it makes absolutely no sense anymore. It started off being the cylinder, which we then did a lot of connects and dissolves, pushing and pulling and things all over the place, and then copied it, normal moved and stitched and sewed. So essentially that pattern is so all over the place it's not going to help anyone at all and makes no sense. So we delete it. So we're going to Layouts and BP UV Edit. BP stands for Body Paint, and that used to be a completely standalone piece of software that you could purchase. Still made by Maxon, but then Maxon decided to fully integrate it within Cinema 4D quite a while ago. So here we are in the layout for BP UV Edit, and it is quite substantially different to S22. So how do we go about things without having that central column of icons to control what we're doing to start off with? We come up to this paint setup wizard. And just a point to note, it's always best to do this with one object in your scene. You can always just copy and paste it into a new scene. The reason being, it's just going to be very uncluttered and things aren't going to get in your way while you're doing this. So here we are with a green tick saying, yes, we've selected this object for unwrapping. And we hit next and we get optimal cubic mapping coming up. And what does that mean? We're essentially going to get a side, a front, a side and a back for our outer and our inner glass, and then the other parts are going to be as if you were cubically mapping your texture in Cinema 4D, and it's just going to unwrap those. The next part, under Maximum, this is where you enter your pixel size, and this is going to be the width of our Photoshop document. So 5,000 pixels is pretty much your entry level for these types of things. Why are we using only using entry level? It's because the graphics we're going to be laying on top are going to be slightly blurred because we're going to be using it for a displacement map. And the displacement map likes things to be slightly blurred so we can get away with it at 5,000 pixels. But you can go up to 7,500, even 10,000 if you have sharper graphics that you need to apply. We hit finish, close, and here we are with our layout. And as suspected, we have four cubic panels. I'm going to say that for the outside because they're taller, and four for the inner, an outer base because it looks wider, and an inner one. And we can just check to see if that is true by doing UV mesh and polygons. And you have two options either you brush on to one of these panels and it highlights it on the bottle, or you can draw directly onto your object. Now, you've already seen there that. Polygons are now occupying two different islands of mesh, as they're called. Which isn't a problem, provided that they're all adjacent and joined together, where you need them to be for the graphics to spill over. Now, in our case, if we were to highlight one of these faces, that would be fine for some of our graphics, but the width of our Dirty Fox in Boss is wider there, You've got the 750mm down the bottom, the dots do spill over to the sides as well, so we are going to need to use more than one panel. And ideally, you would want this to be, your, say, your central, 
and the left and right ones of it to be completely adjacent. So by shifting and selecting, we can see whether that is true. In a perfect world, this one will be sitting right next to it, and it's not. So what do we do? We need to rejig and reconfigure the order of these. And how do we do that? We use a trusty move tool. So let's just move this panel off stage left for the while and go back to our live selection. And double clicking gives us all the polygons in an island. And the spacebar will toggle between the last two tools that you have used. So we can just keep going backwards and forwards like that. Move him over. Spacebar again. So that's that one selected. So let's just make sure that all three of these do then sit adjacently, which they now do. Terrific. Back to our move tool. Move all those over there. Spacebar, double click. Spacebar again to move. So he is back on our canvas. And we're going to need to have all of those on there for the, when you apply the bump map, as that does occupy the entire bottle structure. Okay, so if our graphics are applied onto this center panel, oh, to select, let's just go back a step, there we go, then we need it to have the two adjacent sides butting up completely to it, so how are we going to do that? Now Cinema, uh, all the two lovely tools for moving and panning on one and two, and you can use those exactly within this body paint texture UV editor. And what would be great is if we had a bit more real estate to play with. So the burger and undock. Now we can pull this down and we can really use one and two properly to zoom in. So let's just double click this one. Space bar to move. Now what would be great is if these snapped to the edges. And we would definitely know they were there. And under our move tool, under snapping, you just need to make sure that you've got point and edge selected and I've up the radius from a normal 8 to 10. So let's just see if that works. And no, we are getting no snapping at all. Why is that? It's because we're not zoomed in enough. There we go. As soon as you get close enough in, we get a lovely snap. And you'll notice that some of these points are over, meaning they have gone over into the next area and some are under meaning they haven't reached it yet well nothing's ever really perfect so what are we going to do well i'll tell you what we're going to do we are going to first of all move this panel over so we've got our move tool we've got our snapping point and edges and 10 and the reason being i'm going to do this one to show you what to do is because our graphics do spill up into this top area and we are going to need to pull I think it's about three rows over so we can go to UV mesh and change to points and if we select one of these points here again we're going to move so we need to make sure in the point mode that everything is going to snap now to my knowledge, there is not a weld tool within BB UV Edit whereby you could select two points normally in cinema and weld them to create one point exactly in the middle of them. And I think the reason being for that is that a polygon within your UV mesh needs to have four points of its own. If it starts sharing points between polygons, it could get quite confused. So please forgive my ignorance if that is not true, but that would be a good reason why so I'm going to manually keep moving and spacebar to get back to select so that I'm trying to create these going down a vertical line. And some of them need it only to go on one side. Some, both of them need to go over on that one. This one needs to come straight over. So we're looking for that vertical line. So that when we lay our graphics on top, everything is pretty much 
in a very usable format and there is no gap between them. Now for many a year I avoided unwrapping UVs for the reason that it is quite complicated when you are doing it this way and especially when time is against you, clients are wanting images, you're going to get things done you would rather find another quicker way to say, say cubic mapping itself or flat mapping or cylindrical, anything to get your graphics on there. And to be honest, they all do a great job. It's just if you had something a bit more complicated with this, whereby we are trying to say cylindrically map our main boss logo and the size of the bottle and the little dots, and then to put the lugs on the bottom as well. Yes, you could make some selections, but when you do that, glass reacts in a really bad way at the edge of those things because it's displacing. And you really don't want crazy things happening at the line where those edges of selections go over. Yes, you could go in and retouch it, but do you really want to be doing that? So yes, I am guilty of avoiding body paint like anything just because it was so difficult to understand what you had to do and what was going on so hopefully this video is helping some of those people allay those fears when well, actually I had somebody show me this years ago I probably wouldn't have shied away from it so much just the nature of the beast Right, so as I say, I'm not going to do this one here just because of time, because we're already up to 12 minutes and we need to get this tutorial moving. So what we've done there, we now have what we require with our layout. So we come down to layers and essentially this is like a pseudo Photoshop file showing what layers are. And what we need is another layer on top with the UV mesh and Body paint provides this lovely little icon at the bottom and there we go so all the lines that you can see on the polygons are now in like a white mesh on a transparent background perfect for us being able to turn it on and off just for what we want so we do file save texture as and we definitely want a psd so we can turn that uv mesh layer off i'm just going to save this to the desktop not to a text file because we're not going to test out a full render Let's double click, see what we have got with our 5000 pixel wide file. Let's just check that is 5000 pixels. Yes, it is. That's great. And a UV mesh layer that we can turn on and off. So, what do we do now? So, on the desktop, I've already got our emboss that we used on the course. And let's start with getting the lugs over. So back to body paint, let's just check that that is the outer. Yep, and then that one you will see inside. So yes, it is this larger one. And very handy, it is not circular. Which I find quite a lot with the R21 unwrappings. So what we can do is just get ourselves a command T and holding down Alt, we are going to contract it downwards. And let's just move that bottom part up there. So the distance for the outer part is basically one polygon, and that is working. And let's just group all the other pieces to make it easy to see. And we've gone in between the solid color so let's just all click that back to the lugs so yes as we said our graphics are wider than one panel and let's get the 750 as our center guide and where this loopy part came up that was where i was keen to make sure that there were no gaps in there so yes if there was a bit more time i would make sure that all of those had no gaps in either and from our original one, from the course, the way it unwrapped it, it kind of warped it. 
and I then warped our main logo to line up with polygon edges. Things are different this time. No need to warp so heavily. Now then, if you do Command-T and try and change it, it's an unfortunately, but because you put a smart filter on there for Gaussian Blur, I'm not going to allow you to do that, but you will be able to if you unlink the mask. It's quite sneaky, but it's a good thing. So now with holding down our Command key, we can pull and push our corners so that they're lining up with that polygon. And the F is looking pretty good. Hit return, relink it up. Things are looking good. Resave, go back to cinema. We can now go back to our startup user layout. And what I like to do is delete that material. Start again, sometimes I get some anomalies happening. I'm just gonna create a normal cinema material, not even a Corona one. Pop it in. Yes, it's not going to be in our text root. And if you drag and drop onto the bottle, the default is UV map, which is handy. However, it is pretty low res. So let's just double click it, get the editor, change from default to something around about 2048 by 2048. So we can see what's going on. And we are looking pretty good. Everything is joining up. Um, the lugs are where you would expect them, even though in Photoshop it wasn't circular. The UV map stretches it back to be circular. Just one of those anomalies. And I found it's too complicated within body paint to try and make that circular because you can't really get a point of reference for what a full circle would look like. You'd have to go back to your Photoshop file, create a circle, load it back in again and stretch it. Well, there doesn't seem to be much point in doing that. You might as well just save yourself time and just make sure you have a one edge loop of polygons within Photoshop as a distance marker. Seems to make a lot more sense and save time. So there we go. We have unwrapped the UVs in R21. Yes, a bit of tidying up to do there, but that can be done in a matter of, say, five minutes or so, but we're already up to 17 minutes on here. So let's call it a day. And hopefully that has answered your question. Okay, thank you very much.